My name is Tiffany C. Wright, and I am the resourceful CEO. I want to talk to you about finding good people. So it's something that I hear a lot of. I, I hear a lot of, I can't find good people. I can't find good people. And I typically say that if you can't find good people, you really don't know what you're looking for. What does good people mean? What does it mean to you? What makes an employee a good person for that role? If you cannot explain what that means in the, I'm not talking about, and I, I truly believe in really defining that in the, over the course of a page or a page and a half, but, uh, um, and I don't mean a whole bunch of words, it's more like bullet points, just bullet points. St strategically, how are they contributing? And then task-wise, how are they contributing? And what's their overall role? Overall role at the top, that kind of thing. But if you can't say, for instance, I need to hire a marketing person who is really good at social media, marketing communications, uh, creating presentations and so on, because we want to expand our reach to companies that really spend a lot more time on social media or that are responsive to presentations or whatever, or, or we really want to build out our website because we're now getting more business from our website or whatever. If you just say, I want a marketing person. Well, what does that mean? Some marketing people are really good at like, business development type stuff or supporting a business development and sales, sales staff with content. Others are really good about messaging and so on. It really can hone in on that. So you have to be aware of what you, of what you need and, and and then hire that person to meet the needs. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you need a salesperson. Do you need a salesperson who's really good at schmoozing with people because you have a six month sales process? Who, someone who's really good at developing and building relationships with people they go out golfing or they, you know, they check in with the folks on Zoom every couple of weeks. Or do you need someone who's more of a, I can, I can sell something in a couple of weeks. It really, those are two different types of personality characteristics. And so you need to know what it is that you want before you go out and search for them. And so if you don't know what you need in your people, or you, what you need them to do, or how you need them to be, how you need them to be in the role, what they're supposed to do, then you're not going to find the right person. <laughs> and it's just going to keep changing. Oh, he's not the right person. They're not, not the right. I don't have a good person. No, the issue is you don't know what you want. If you don't know what you want, you can't quantify it or qual you can't qualify it. You can't communicate it. And so you'll keep hiring the wrong people, hiring, firing, or moving them around into different positions, trying to find a good fit. So the first thing you have to do is figure out what the heck you need the person for and why. And then what does that mean in terms of the characteristics that they need to have? Also, if your company has this really strong culture, like your culture is fun and exciting and so on, don't get someone who's like, dead in the water, a dead fish, you know, who's extremely introverted and doesn't interact with anyone, you completely mess up the team dynamics. The other thing is that if you get, if you're like heavily research oriented and the people tend to be introverts and you get someone who's like, rah, 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 male or female, they're going to clash. So again, that if you have to look at your company culture and make sure that you get someone who fits the culture in addition to having having a, a, a specific skill set. If you're not sure, you can always go for a broader skill set and a good cultural fit. I always say err on the side of cultural fit with a broader, a broader skill set because you can help people become more specific, but it's very difficult for people who are highly specific to become broader without a lot of training and development and, and so on. I'm an advocate of training and development 
but when someone is just coming in and unless that's part of your system like some there are some companies out there that focus on people who i mean that's how they hire is they hire for fit and then they train and develop and train and develop and so on but most companies don't do that so if you're like most companies focus on fit and then getting the person making sure that they can actually perform in a role that you want them to perform in and making sure that they're fit to that role. And if you need to err, err on the side of having broader, uh, a, a broader fit, like a broader skill set, as opposed to, you know, they're, they're really good. For instance, you can be really good at, you want someone who is head, to head up your operations and someone is really good at like time studies and, 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 and lean manufacturing and all of that, but you want someone who actually can ex communicate this information to purchasing, can, can talk to the financial group about these issues that can help you create key performance uh, uh, indicators for folks on the operational team. And if they're just so highly specific, lots of times they won't be able to do that. Whereas someone who understands that can actually go deeper or they can always outsource or hire someone uh, to assist them in those particular areas. Got my, get my drift. <laughs> oh, while I'm thinking about it, remember to like this video and subscribe. Thank you. So what, let's see. So what else? Oh, hiring. So, and then the other thing is make sure that you pay people well, pay them well. I mean, I'm hearing all these restaurant owners. And again, I don't really work with restaurant owners. So forgive me if I don't have the same, I mean, I have empathy for them, but I've always said to my clients, if you are only focusing on getting people at a lower wage, then you're going to have, and you're looking at scarcity and you're not going to get the profits that you want. I've always said that if you can really put the systems in place to help, to really leverage your employees and engage your employees, then you will have significant profits and you, even despite paying your employees more. I'm also a believer in bonuses. So time performance or pay, to performance. So don't just give someone this, don't just increase their salary, give them, you know, increase the about increase the, the amount of money that could, they could make if they hit certain, uh, if they hit certain milestones and make those milestones quarterly. Don't make someone wait to the end of the year <laughs> to get a bonus, especially if you're, they're being, they're being, pulled by someone offering them or pulled, potentially pulled away or lured away by someone offering 20% more in salary saying, hey, you'll get an additional, let's say they're making 80,000, you'll get an additional $20,000 at the end of the year or at the end of whatever period, you know, at, at the end of 12 months after you do all of these things. No, 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 no. You would give them 5,000 a quarter that would be much better. And that's also much more tied to performance, right? So things like that or other kinds of bonuses, but you, you get my point. So, uh, but yes, offer them pay that's commensurate with what they're doing. And sometimes you can't just look at what you're paying. Like I had said, restaurant owners had to increase the pay to like 13, $14 an hour where they were only paying uh, to people who were making what I don't know, like three fifty an hour plus plus tips or whatever it is, it's some ridiculously low amount. I've always thought, and and anyway, so the, these folks are being lured away by warehouses where they were being paid sixteen, seventeen dollars an hour. So, and and I hear small business owners say, oh, you know, they could go here for that amount, or they could go there. People don't leave for 10% increases, and they do leave for 20, 25% increases in pay. But for 10%, no. But if you don't treat them well, and somewhere, someone over here is offering them more money, they're going to leave. And now, they will keep jumping around, but until they land at a place that 
not only treats, not only pays them well, but also treats them well. And then it's going to be very difficult to lure them away. So do the same thing with your own employees. Do the same thing with folks that you so hire, just how I described, and then cultivate them, make them feel like they're wanted. Give them the money that they want or the pay increases. Don't just give them money when they come, you know, give them a certain amount of pay when they come in, but look at it periodically every, well, right now you might need to look at it every quarter <laughs> with the way the wages are going up, but every six months to a year, typically, and see if there needs to be an adjustment and also talk to them about what kind of pay is expected and and if you do have someone leaves and they say that the reason is pay do an exit interview a real exit interview because you'll often find that it wasn't just the pay it's something else and if it is if, if it really is the pay then you're going to have to stop being stingy and you're going to have to look at paying more but instead of saying oh if i pay them more my bottom line is going to decrease then focus on putting in processes and the structure necessary to make sure that instead of getting, you know, instead of having each employee generate, I don't know, a hundred thousand in revenue, you want to get each employee to generate a hundred twenty thousand in revenue. Do you get my point? So, so these are the kinds of things you need to think of. Don't think scarcity. Oh my God, you're going to really cut my margins. Think abundance. Oh. I'm going to pay them more. And so I need to figure out a way to be able to leverage them better, make them more productive so that I really get the money, the investment that I'm making in them. I get my money's worth. That's the way you think about it. This is Tiffany C. Wright, the resourceful CEO.